असलम इरीगेंस एंड इंट्राकेनाल मेडिकलमेंट्स आज हम लोग पढ़ेंगे तो जब भी हम एंडोडोंटिक ट्रीटमेंट करते हैं किसी भी टूथ का तो उसमें क्लीनिंग शेपिंग आर द इनिशियल स्टेप्स विच वी आर वी हैव टू टेक तो शेपिंग में हम लोग इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स यूज करते हैं और क्लीनिंग के लिए इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स के नॉट बी हेल्पफुल ओके बेसिकली पीपल सोचते हैं कि शेपिंग एंड क्लीनिंग ऑल दोज कैन बी डन बाई इंस्ट्रूमेंट बट एक्चुअली क्लीनिंग नीड्स इरीगेंस ओके तो इरीगेंस जो होता है वो डेब्रेज रिमूव करता है डेंटानल चिप्स रिमूव करता है इंट्रोराडिकुलर माइक्रोबियल इन्फेक्शन ये सब रिमूव करता है तो सबसे पहले हम इरीगेंस की बात करेंगे उसके बाद मेरी कमेंट्स की बात करेंगे इरीगेंस के सेवन आइडल रिक्वायरमेंट्स एंटी माइक्रोबियल होना चाहिए मेकेनिकल फ्लशिंग करना चाहिए नॉन टॉक्सिंग बायो कम्पैक्टेबल होना चाहिए रिजोल्व द निक्रोटिक एंड वाइटल पार्क टिश्यू लुब्रिकेंट होना चाहिए रिमूव द स्मेल लेयर एंड लो सर्फेस टेंशन इरीगेंस जो हम लोग इसमें बात करेंगे द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट वन सोडियम हाइपोक्लोराइड द ई डी टी ए द क्लोरहेक्सिडीन डाइक्लूकोनेड एंड द एम टी ए डी सोडियम हाइपोक्लोराइड जो है दैट इज एन ए ओ सी एल इट इज रिड्यूसिंग एजेंट क्लियर स्ट्रॉक कलर सोल्यूशन कंटेनिंग फाइव परसेंट अवेलेबल क्लोरिन ओके सो एन ए ओ सी एल कैसे काम करता है इट आयोनाइज एंड प्रोड्यूस हाइपोक्लोरस एसिड एंड हाइपोक्लोराइड आयन and these two what they do they provide anti microbial activity to so, sodium hypochlorite kisi concentration mein use hoga to basically generally jo concentration range bataya gaya hai which it is 0.5 to 5.2% solution however hum log 2.5% hi use karte hain because kyun isme toxicity ki potential bahut kam hoga 2.5 mein agar 5.2 lenge to zyada toxic hoga okay But what happens is when you reduce the concentration, the effectiveness also lessens. So how will you compensate for it? इसको compensate करने के लिए हमें volume बढ़ा सकते हैं irrigation का duration बढ़ा सकते हैं warm कर सकते हैं उसको and passive ultrasonic activation कर सकते हैं ठीक है ये चार चीज करके हम इसको compensate कर सकते हैं तो जब भी हम sodium hypochlorite use कर रहे हैं तो वो टू आवर ट्वेंटी मिनट्स में पूरे पल्प को डिजोल्व कर देगा और इसके बाद जो नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट मोस्ट इफेक्टिव इरिगेंट है वो 24 घंटे लगाता है सो दिस इज द मोस्ट इफेक्टिव इरिगेंट इन डिजोल्विंग द पल्प ओके तो जो एन है वो वर्क कैसे करता है इट वर्क्स इन टू फेजेस सो इट कॉसेज द डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ बैक्टीरिया बाई टू फेजेस फर्स्ट इज द पेनेट्रेशन इन टू द बैक्टीरियल वॉल बैक्टीरियल सेल वॉल एंड सेकेंड इज द केमिकल कॉम्बिनेशन विद प्रोटोप्लास ठीक है तो सबसे पहले क्या करेगा जाएगा बैक्टीरिया के सेल वॉल को पेनेट्रेट करेगा उसके बाद जो है प्रोटोप्लाज्म से रिएक्ट करेगा और जो तीसरा काम जो करेगा वो ये है कि इट विल कॉज डिस्ट्रप्शन ऑफ द डीएनए सिंथेसिस ओके सो दिस सोडियम हाइपोक्लोराइट हैज सर्टेन ड्रॉबैक्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इट हैज साइट ऑफ टॉक्सिटी प्रॉब्लम एंड दैट इज द रीजन वी आर यूजिंग टू पॉइंट कॉन्सेंट्रेशन और लेसर कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ओके इवन दो फाइव पॉइंट मोर इफेक्टिव and it does not remove the inorganic component of smell layer it is unpleasant taste and it requires cool place okay so you have to keep it in cool place so it is also kind of draw back for it ab edta ki baat karte hain it is ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid and uh, it is a chelating agent and was given by nigard it is non toxic irritating in weak solution okay so it is a chelating agent हमारा सोडियम हाइपोक्लोराइड रिड्यूसिंग एजेंट था ईडीटीए चिलेटिंग एजेंट है और ये नॉन टॉक्सिक है इरिटेटिंग है वीक सोल्यूशन में तो इट इज नॉन टॉक्सिक लेकिन हमारा सोडियम हाइपोक्लोराइड टॉक्सिक हाई कॉन्सेंट्रेशन सो वॉट इट डज इट इज हाईली स्टेबल चिलेट ठीक है तो इट फॉर्म्स हाईली स्टेबल चिलेट इन कॉम्बिनेशन विद हेवी मेटल्स ओके सो द फंक्शन इज दो फंक्शन होते हैं इट फॉर्म्स कैल्शियम चिलेट सोल्यूशन जो तुम्हारा डेंटीन की कैल्शियम होते हैं उससे रिएक्ट करके कैल्शियम चिलेट सोल्यूशन बना लेता है तो उससे क्या होगा जो डेंटिन तुम्हारा है दैट विल बिकम मोर फ्राइबल वीक हो जाएगा एंड इट विल बी इजियर टू इंस्ट्रूमेंट देर फोर दिस ईडीटीए इट इज हेल्पफुल इन क्लीनिंग एंड शेपिंग टू ओके सो मोर एक्सपोजर मोर डिमिनलाइजेशन ओके एंड द सेकेंड थिंग इज दैट इट रिमूव द स्मेल तो ये दो काम कर रहा है क्लीनिंग शेपिंग में भी हेल्प कर रहा है और दूसरा जो है हमारे इरीगेंट की तरह भी काम कर रहा है मेथड ऑफ यूजिंग फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल सिरेंज लेके टू थ्री ड्रॉप यू हैव टू फोर उसके बाद तीन चीजें कर सकते हैं या तो इंस्ट्रूमेंट को पंप इंस्ट्रूमेंट से पंप करो उसको इनसाइड या फिर एक मिनट के लिए वेट करो ग्रेविटी से अपने आप चला जाएगा ठीक है और उसके बाद इंस्ट्रूमेंट डालो या तीसरा है कि इंस्ट्रूमेंट पे भी ये थोड़ा सा मटेरियल लगा लो और उसके बाद उसको इंसर्ट करो 
How do you use it in the clinics? It is 17% EDTA for one minute, followed by final rinse with NaOCl. Okay. Chlorhexidine digluconate that is two percent, and it is a broad spectrum antimicrobial. Okay, and mainly it works on uh, Antamoeba fecalis. Uh, it is the most common pathogen in the root canal. Okay, and it also it has the property of substantivity. Chlorhexidine digluconate has a property of substantivity means sustained availability. It gets absorbed and it will be released in between durations. And it is less toxic, but the main thing is that it does not do removal of the smear layer. Therefore, you have to use it with conjugation with irrigants. You cannot use it alone. You have to use it with irrigants. And how does it work? It also uh, penetrates the cell membrane and it causes coagulation of the cytoplasmic content. We had studied uh, before in EDTA that it causes. Sorry, in uh, sodium hypochlorite, uh, that it disrupts the DNA synthesis. And here we have studied that it just coagulates the cytoplasm. So um, the first one was sodium hypochlorite. It was a reducing agent. Then we studied that uh, um, second one, which is the EDTA. It was a chelating agent. And then we studied that the chlorhexidine digluconate it is a antimicrobial agent. Okay. The next one is MTAD. It is a mixture of tetracycline isomer, uh, citric acid, and a detergent. So it is a mixture of tetracycline isomer, citric acid, and a detergent, which is twin AT. So this tetracycline isomer provides the antibacterial effect. So MTAD it uh, is used to final rinse the smooth to remove the smear layer. It is used as a final rinse to remove the smear layer. And the regime is 1.3 NaOCl irrigation is done, and then you use the MTAD. Okay. Now the fact is affecting the efficacy of irrigants. First is the adequate irrigation is necessary. Then frequent irrigation is done. Then diameter of canal and exchange of solution, temperature of NaOCl, and then the passive ultrasonic irrigation. So, more the diameter, less uh, better will be the irrigation and temperature. The NaOCl temperature is increased. Okay. Now, certain irrigation guidelines are there. Irrigation guidelines, uh, in that uh, the one thing and the only one thing you need for irrigation is a lure lock syringe, and that has to be disposable, obviously. And what uh, what is uh, you know uh, uh, what is special about the syringe is that it has side winds, so there is no apical force, so it will produce force in this direction. No apical force will be there, so there will be no seepage in the periradicular area. Okay, so um, there should be room between the needle and the root canal. So when you insert the needle, there should be some room, some space between the needle and the root canal, so that the Irrigation, irrigating solution, you, it can you know uh, get back towards the coronal aspect. It should not come here downwards. Okay, and you have to insert the needle passively. Do not apply much force, and the needle should not bind. If it is binding, that means the space in between is not present. So when you inject in such situation, it will definitely go in this direction, and it will cause infection and further damage. So you have to inject with little or no pressure, and there should be return of uh, return flow of solution. Okay, so the solution will return towards the coronal aspect, and you have to use a gauge to soak the solution. And after irrigation, dry it, and you you can suck the remaining irrigation solution back with the plunger. Okay, you have to dry it, and you have to suck the remaining solution, and then the final drying it is done with absorbent paper. The final drying is done with absorbent paper. And the clinical significance is sodium hypochlorite accident, uh, which occurs when you accidentally give a lot of pressure in the apical area and uh, you inject the solution downwards. So the hypochlorite is toxic, so it causes toxicity and uh, necrosis of the area. Okay. Next, we'll study about the intracanal medicaments. So why do we need intracanal medicaments? We have done cleaning, shaping, and now we have done the irrigation also. 
And now, why do we need infrocanonical medicine? So they are used in cases when the polymicrobial nature demands the use. For example, you have weeping canals or the canal is very infected. So in that cases, you need infrocanonical medicaments. So there are certain ideal requirements of infrocanonical medicaments. First of all, it should be antimicrobial, non-irritating, and it should remain stable. It should have prolonged effect. And it should be active in the presence of blood serum and proteins and it should have low surface tension, should not interfere with the repair and it should not cause staining of the tooth and no self-mediated immune response should be there. So indications of the usage, as I already said, it is used in weeping canals, remaining microbes uh, removal and in when the root canal contains uh, inert. I mean to render the root canal contents in earth and neutralize the tissue debris and as a barrier against leakage. Okay, so um, history and present. So what materials were used in history and what materials are used now? So in history, Grossman stated the use of PBSC, that is P for penicillin, B for bacitracin, S for streptomycin, and C is for cryolite, which is a vehicle here. And he also used uh, PBSCN, which is neomycin, and it is an antifungal agent. But both of these, they have only bacteriostatic effect. Therefore, they are not recommended now. Also, formocrisol was used, but uh, it's now used also uh, for the, by the periodontists, but uh, not in endodontic form. Okay? And eugenol, it is a periradical tissue toxin, so these two are also not recommended now. So what do we recommend now? These are calcium hydroxide and chlorhexidine digluconate. Calcium hydroxide and chlorhexidine digluconate. So calcium hydroxide, it was introduced by Hermann and the pH of calcium hydroxide is 12.5 uh, and it is because of this pH that it has a bactericidal effect. Okay. And uh, uh, it uh, has two properties antimicrobial and uh, heart tissue repair and formation. So, how it works? It works by releasing uh, hydroxyl ions, which has antimicrobial properties. So, these hydroxyl ions they are highly oxidizing free radicals and they will cause uh, damage to the membrane, to the cell membrane, and uh, to will cause protein denaturation and will damage the bacterial DNA. Okay. So what it does, it does three things, damage the membrane, protein denaturation and damages the bacterial DNA. And the vehicle used is uh, aqueous, aqueous viscous or oily vehicles and uh, we do not use water soluble vehicles because you have to change the dressing again and again. So examples of aqueous vehicles are glycerine, polyethylene glycol. So uh, these would need multiple dressing multiple dressing while these can go long without uh, changing the dressing okay so we often combine uh, cmcp with the 0.12 percent chlorhexidine to get the synergistic antimicrobial effect now the next one is chlorhexidine digluconate and it is effective against uh, efficalis and candida albicans so it is used both as an irrigant and as intracanal medicament. Okay. So for the medicament, you need two percent. Uh, it is available as two percent CHX gel and a mixture of CHX and calcium hydroxide. Now we come to temporary filling materials. These are Cavit and IRM. And uh, generally, when we do temporary filling, the dressing has to be renewed within a week. Okay. So because what happens is. Um, these dressings they become diluted with the peri radical exudate and they are decomposed by interaction with the microorganisms. So we need to change it. So the temporary filling material they should be uh, impervious to the fluids. They should provide hermetical seal and uh, no pressure in the dressing and they should harden with uh, within minutes and uh, should uh, be able to wear uh, the masticatory forces and they should be easy to manipulate. 